Ah, welcome back, Grumbleweed here. I've been out on a few test rides this morning. I saw my um, 1200 uh, GS Adventure last month, so I'm um, just at the moment just looking around to see what what's what may be available in the future. So uh, yeah, I went out on the new 1250 um, GS, the normal version. Uh, here's the this is the HP uh, uh, variant. Yeah, really impressed. All the mid range. Uh, from really low revs, a lot more torque uh, due to the shift cam. Um, I couldn't even feel the shift cam working, so you know, obviously you just don't notice it. The only thing you notice for the whole low to mid range and up to high range, power's always there. So whether you're in four, fifth, six, doing 70Ks, 100Ks, um, power's always there. You, know, you don't even have to change gear uh, a lot of the time. Um, you just twist the throttle and it just takes off. It's just e effortless. Um, this is the normal version, so the screen's a bit, a bit lower, um, but yeah, plenty of protection. And obviously the Adventure uh, provides a lot more protection, so yeah. Uh, overall, um, the engine and the power is, uh, is, uh, is, is far superior to the, the old 1200, so yeah, everything else is the same, um, really. Um, so yeah, really, really impressed um, with the 1250. So yeah, that's an option for the new bike. So yeah, really like that one. So what to do next? I took that back and then uh, picked up the uh, S1000XR, the 2020 version, the completely revamped version. And I t um, as soon as I got on it, um, this is not lowered, but the seat's in its lower position. Uh, I noticed it straight away. As soon as you click it on, 2,000 revs, and after, after a few seconds, it, it dies down to about one and a half thousand. But you still got a lot of good vibration between the legs. Uh, and as soon as you start taking off on it, um, yeah, there's still vibrations in the, in the handlebars, but only only minimal. But they're they're there. Um, but I didn't like the seating position personally because yeah, it was you're on top of the bike uh, compared to the GS. Uh, even on with the screen on its high position, as you see there, my helmet and, and uh, was way above the the top edge of the edge of the screen. So yeah, that didn't like that, and also. Um, often to like about it yeah being on top of it rather than in it um, you slightly lent forward uh, on flat level ground you slightly le uh, lent on the handlebars only slightly but um, been in the Alps a lot um, coming down those mountains quite steep steep you have a lot more pressure on, the ha on your ha on your hands uh, so I would imagine it could be a little bit tiring during the daytime but um, what I also didn't like is um, pulling up to junctions um, the pegs right where you put your feet so you put your feet down and the pegs are there in the way so uh, because this was the higher version I had a problem putting my feet down I had to put my, my feet slightly forward or slightly behind me uh, to get my feet on the, on the floor because um, the, the, the pegs are situated right um, where you where you normally stand so that wasn't I didn't enjoy that either so there you go uh, the clutch bites immediately so as soon as you only move it a few millimetres and the clutch clutch is bit. So I want two kin on that. Um, but again, um, I give it a blast. Um, yeah, and obviously um, if you're driving third, fourth and you're up to about six, seven thousand, it flies. Um, but if you compare this, if you're doing like um, 80, 90 Ks, 100 Ks an hour, uh, in six on this and six on the, the GS, then you, and you floor the throttle, this won't, this won't happen. You have to drop this down two gears uh, before the power kicks in, and then you have to change back up again. Whereas the GS is effortless. You just literally uh, hit the throttle, and it just it just pulls it pulls away like a train. This one needs a bit more work. So um, yeah, not for me. Too much um, changing down, hitting the th uh, pulling the throttle, uh, and then changing back up again. It's just you know, it's just unnecessary. Um, I want a bike that uh, when I put one in, you hit the throttle, it just it just takes off. I don't want to have the asshole to pull it, um, to keep going backwards and forwards. Now to a few stats. I looked at the KTM. KTM's got its uh, 141 newton meters, 8,000. Quite heavy on fuel. Um, the S1000 is the same. Um, the torque, the torque's at high revs, and it's also not very good on fuel. But the GS there, look, a lot more torque, a far lower rate, brilliant economy, outstanding all-round bike. So. Um, for me, for touring long distance, um, you know, over three or four years, then you can't you can't um, beat the stats um, there. Um, excellent economy.
Uh, it's near 25% better economy on the bike, so there's that. And the other two have got chains, so you've got to about 250 euros a time for uh, a new chain and stuff, so yeah, not for me. So yeah, it looks look at the moment looking like um, a new GS uh, 1250. So yeah, well impressed. So yeah, I've bought bikes in the past without test riding and multi strider. Um, so that's me. KTM I won't touch the barge pole. Don't like them. Um, for me, then they're, they're not a bike to tour on. Um, a lot of pe people tell you that they are good for touring, but yeah. With hardly any screen on the front, um, I don't fancy going on the motorways and on, on hot um, with no protection. Um, crap, you know what I mean? Too small, too uncomfortable. Um, I, I I have had a look at the uh, the, the Super Duke DT, and obviously yeah, it ain't it ain't for me. Uh, and I, then on top of that, you got warranty problems. I watched a few more videos on KTM at warranties, and a lot of people have had issues and ums and ahring and bits and bobs. So yeah, I wouldn't touch KTM. So. The only manufacturer I'd now consider would be probably uh, Ducati. Uh, I was impressed with my uh, 12, 1200 uh, S mod uh, Strada. The only problem with that was um, it didn't like going slow. So maybe this new V4 Strada that's coming out shortly, maybe that's slightly different. But uh, at the moment, very, very hard to beat the GS um, for all round um, as an all round bike. I know obviously obviously it's less because it's got the shaft drive a lot less maintenance and I would argue that over a period of four years um, against the XR they'd roughly work out the same price because the main the maintenance on the XR will be a lot more uh, and the fuel economy on this is 25% better so um, to buy GS's would be um, more expensive but on the, on the long run there won't be any um, dearer anyway <laughs> I've waffled on enough until next time take care